What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, strengthsandsneakers.com. I haven't done a new medication Monday in a few weeks, so I thought this was a good opportunity for me to add some additional value this week and cover a medication that I think is really important or could have a future impact in the field of psychiatry. Now, there's a very special population that we worry about depression in. And we worry about depression in this population so much so that everybody that comes in to, to go through this process also gets screened for depression after they finish the process. So what am I talking about and what, and what is that population that we're referring to? That is women who have recently given birth to a child. So this would be known as things like postpartum depression. So postpartum depression is such a significant factor in terms of the care of the, the infant after birth that they, we give a screening scale to every one of the people who come in to give birth at our facility. And the name of that screening scale, and I'm going to pop it up here for reference as well as a link in the, in the description, it's called the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale, EPDS for short. And this is a screening questionnaire that helps us to identify those mothers who might be most at risk for depression. So what does all of this have to do with New Medication Monday and the medication I'm going to talk about? Well, I'm going to take us back to 2019 first. So in 2019, the FDA approved a medication called Braxanolone. Now, you may not even have heard of Braxanolone. It may have just, you know, whatever, gone over the top. It's something that's not talked about all that much. Gone over our heads a little bit. But what is it? It's an IV version of alloprogenolone, okay? And it's for the treatment of postpartum depression. So let's talk a little bit about alloprogenolone and what it is and why it's important, specifically in the postpartum period. So this is an endogenous neuroactive steroid, okay? Endogenous neuroactive steroid that acts as an allosteric modulator, allosteric modulator of specifically the GABA-A receptors. So if we're thinking about GABA receptors, we're thinking like benzodiazepines, barbiturates work there, and this also happens to modulate those GABA-A receptors. It's believed to improve depression via the enhanced GABA-A signaling throughout the brain. And so that's, again, similar to things like benzodiazepines and barbiturates. The use is a little bit limited, though. What's the challenge with Braxanolone is that it's a 60-hour infusion. So the person, this, this mother, who's now postpartum, who is, you know, taking care of a, a small infant, has to be available to do things has to spend 60 hours additional time in the hospital to get this infusion. And the hospital systems that do this infusion have to be regulated and they have to be certified to do it. So that's another limited, limiting factor. So it's limited by the fact that it's a 60 hour infusion. It's also limited by the fact that you have to be a certified treatment center to administer the medication. So there's not, obviously you can think about it, there's not many places that are doing this right now. The primary side effect to worry about with Braxanolone is sedation and that's one of the reasons why you need constant monitoring in the hospital while that 60 hour infusion is going on. So that takes us to our medication that we're talking about and you might have already guessed it must be some type of alloprogenolone GABA-A modulator and it is. It's called Zoranolone, so similar to Braxanolone. And Zoranolone is also known as SAG or SAGE-217. So SAGE-217 is an oral version. So this is a PO version that you could take by pill form of allopadrenaline, and they're not going to use it just for treating postpartum depression. They're also going to try to get it approved for major depressive disorder in both men and women. So this is something we should be on the lookout for, and what makes it different, what sets it apart from things like braxanolone, which is a great medication that can be used postpartum, is that it doesn't require a 60-hour infusion, doesn't require the constant monitoring, you don't have to be a special site or a special center to administer it you are able to do all of these things with an oral pill form. So that's the big upside to this medication. Um, if you guys are interested in more about this medication or more about postpartum depression, how we treat it, how we screen for it, I'm happy to cover those topics in future videos. Drop a comment below and like and subscribe to the channel so we can continue talking about these important topics.